Let's go I hear like, people's voices in my head that I've never heard before. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, maybe... Like, I, I can hear Zoroth's voice. I've never heard someone's voice like that before. Hi, I'm Em. And I'm Liv. And we're here on a sidekicks. So, today we're going to be talking about how our mediumship works. So, if you don't know, we're psychic mediums and each medium thinks, gifts, whatever, they all work differently. Now, everyone in existence has psychic abilities and your psychic abilities are based upon the way in which you think. So, if you're one to have an inner monologue, or if you can picture images in your head, that's going to give you information about how your specific gifts work. But, for us, we differ based upon the way in which we think. Liv is more clairvoyant, meaning she sees more stuff, and I am more claircognizant, meaning I know more stuff. So we're going to talk about all of the clairs and how each one of these clairs work differently for each of us. So, first off, what happens when a soul talks to you? <laughs> like, like, talks like, words or just communicates in general? Just communicates. Okay. Like, what happens to you each time a soul is like, here's what I have to say? <laughs> it can be a little bit different each time, but the majority, like, I don't know, what is it called? pattern that happens is I will first realize where they are in space like uh, in relation to where I am like based on where I am so it, say I'm sitting down for a medium reading and it's over zoom uh, I if someone already hasn't approached me I will ask whoever I'm talking to for their reading like who do you want to talk to today or what questions do you want answered and that will help me figure out where I need to attune my attention because for me I'm very direction oriented when it comes to my mediumship be like to start a conversation um, so if someone is past or in heaven or spirit I will usually see them or perceive their energy on my right hand side and I don't necessarily physically see people clairvoyantly like other mediums do I see them within my mind's eye, which, like I'm said, deals with how your brain works. So if you're someone that can visualize things, like if I were to say, I don't know, envision a taco, some people can see it in their head, other people can't. Like our friend Amanda from Amanda and Maggie, she can't visualize things in her head, so she sees souls, similarly to M too, but M can visualize things in her head, in front of her. So when I start a reading, I will see, okay, where are people in space? Because that gives me information about where they're coming from, who they might be, and it leads the reading into that. So if I'm talking to spirit guides, they're usually on my left hand side because they deal with things that are associated to you physically in the past, present, or future. So that's just how I orient, orient myself to figure out where the reading's going to start and how it's going to go. Does that answer the question of how like readings start for me? Yeah, but how does it, how do souls talk to you? So they show up on your side and then what? It, it. How do they use your clairs to talk to you? Do you want me to explain my ways of doing it? Yeah, go for it. So for me, when I talk to souls, what happens first is I will perceive them somewhere in the room. So I don't see them usually, I will just feel their energy. So I'm very clairsentient and clairaudient, which allows me to be able to like paint a picture without the visuals by just how the things feel. So I will feel a presence somewhere in the room. Okay, so we both start that way, which is cool. Um, it is not on one side usually, it's just somewhere in the room. Yeah. And they will then present either more masculine or feminine, and it's based not necessarily on gender all the time. It's based upon how their energy feels. So masculine energy feels more structured, feminine energy feels more flowy. And then because I have synesthesia, which is like... Synesthesia is when one of your senses gets triggered through a different means than what it's supposed to. So for example, I can hear colors, I can hear a visual stimulus. So I will usually get colors associated to how their energy sounds and feels. And each color has a different associated meaning towards them. So that will then 
be the overall idea of how this person's energy feels, their energy signature, their personality, that sort of thing. And souls will communicate with me through signs and symbols. So because I'm very clear cognizant, um, I basically just like get knowings of information. It's kind of like an assumption or an instinct. And the easiest way for me to like associate when I'm knowing something is through signs and symbols. So for example, I have signs and symbols that are associated to the four elements. And each one of the elements is associated to a different like feeling. So water, for example, deals with emotions. So they'll show me water in different contexts in order to give me more information than emotions. So for example, if you saw water being still, that would be quiet emotions versus water being very wavy, stormy, that sort of thing that is associated to unstable emotions. So that is the way in which they communicate through to me is by using my signs and symbols and then associating feelings to how these things are being presented. Hi. <laughs> I was listening, I was also thinking about synesthesia, which is why my brain, like, glossed over if anyone saw that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. I like that we have both start out with figuring out where the souls are in the room or, like, orient, like, in relation to where we are. And I think using clairsentience is a better way to explain it. Because before I see somebody, I feel them in the room, like you said, clairsentiently. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people think clairsentience is just feeling emotions or being an empath but it's also like physical sensations whether it be something that you feel on your body or like proprioception so things in space in relation to where you are so now when I finally figure out where the person is in space I'll start it's very much just like if you were playing charades honestly for me clairvoyantly but they also use I would say clairvoyance is like mm, I want to say Claire audience is a trigger Claire for me because for the longest time I've been worried about not being able to get information for people but I really just need like a word because I started doing email readings and I was very worried about doing that because I don't have someone on the other side talking to me but words whether they're spoken or written are like a trigger for me to get more information so if you're like I want to know about this then spirit will show me this is the answer for the question that they have, if you're allowed to know that information. So it starts with clairsentiently feeling where things are, and then they'll give me visual information. Like if someone were jumping around like, it's two words, it starts with this, and they'll use different clairvoyant and other clair information to convey whatever it is that they're trying to say. I don't know if I really have signs or symbols that much. I know you say that I do. You do. I just don't think you necessarily read into them. No, I don't. I feel like water is emotions for me, but people will also, like, a sign or symbol for me for yes is this. So if you have a yes or no question and so whoever the spirit is that's talking to me can answer it as a yes or no, they'll do this. If it's something that you're not supposed to know or things that they can't tell me the answer to, they'll do this, which means they're not allowed to tell me. Um, they'll also make hand gestures too, like if it's something that's more or less or maybe they'll go like this like does this have to do with this person and it, the answer is maybe it's like that and they'll make face expressions to me. Um, the last time you asked me about signs and symbols I told you it was your signs and symbols are emotions. Yeah they do a lot of emotions too. You ask about being male or female that's mm -hmm. been something that's hard or new for me I would say because um, it's not necessarily is this person male or female because they'll show me whether they're male or female or make me feel they're male or female but if I want to know whether someone's on a paternal or maternal side of the family say I'm talking to like your great aunt Betsy I don't know if she's on your maternal or paternal side because for a while feeling whether they were related to a masculine or feminine side of your family was hard now they make me look at people's noses Mm -hmm. which is new for me that's like a couple past month thing so they'll go like this and if their nose looks like your nose I'll ask you like do you have your mom or your dad's side nose and then that'll tell me what side of the family they're related to which I think is fun interesting right <laughs> so if I ask my client like like the soul or spirit that I'm talking to they'll point at their nose and I can see it and if it I'll ask my client like 
do you have your mom or dad's side nose? And if it looks like the person in spirit, then I know who they're from and I think it's funny. So we're gonna go through each one of the clairs because Liv and I have all of them and not everyone will have all of them. So if you can't imagine things in your head, you're probably not so keen on doing clairvoyant things. If you can still see, you probably still have clairvoyance, but in a different manner. So we're gonna go through each one of the clairs and talk about how they're different. So we're gonna start with clairvoyance. So for me, clairvoyance is interesting because I don't believe what I see in my head most of the time. Um, so it has to be, it has to be like redefined by my other clairs. So for example, a lot of times the reason why I see things isn't necessarily because that's how they look. I see them because it's easier for me to visualize the stuff that I'm already getting. So very clear cognizant. I get thoughts. So I'll get thoughts and know everything associated to a topic and then it will get filtered down to visual information. So I basically make up what it looks like in my head based around the things that I psychically already know. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to look exactly the same thing because it could be used as a sign and symbol. So for example, one of the things that we did is we went to a haunted antique shop and the antique shop had like a cabinet there and the people were asking, what did this person keep in the cabinet? So I knew they kept like china like plates in it, but for me, they didn't look the way in which the person that puts the plates like their specific china looked because to me stereotypically china is blue and white plates like they have like the little designs and stuff on them so that is a sign and symbol that my brain uses to understand the idea of china but at the same time with claircognizant information it's easier to uh have like signs and symbols that open up the door for these huge overreaching thoughts because claircognizance can be very uh, complex because it's like understanding an entirety of a thought or idea. So my spirit guides explained to me that it'd be easiest to label each one of these certain ideas. So it's kind of like when you have an experience like your 16th birthday or whatever, you take all of the experience from that, what it looked like, what it sounded like, smelled like, you put it in a folder in your mind, and it's easier to recall that information if you have a label on the folder. So that label is the visual information like I was talking about before, like my signs and symbols, like elements, and it will, they will use those things to pinpoint the knowing information. But I will also physically see things because, again, I don't really believe the things in my head. I believe it more if I can see it physically. So I'll see physical souls. For example, when I started doing this, I would see people like when I woke up in the bathroom or when I was like just sitting on the couch, I would see people just show up. So that is clairvoyance for me. How does it look like for you? For me, it's mostly in my head. I don't like to see things physically because I used to when I was little and it terrified me. I guess mine would be the opposite of I don't trust things that I see physically because they freak me out. So I think it's just my eyes playing tricks on me. But when I see things in my mind, I know it's real because I don't usually think that way all the time. So when I see things clairvoyantly, it's in my mind's eye, which is what a lot of metaphysical people explain as like, you able to envision things um, but I really like it I think it's more interesting because when I see things with people like I'm already said it's not necessarily exactly what things look like with the China cabinet it's just the fact that you have the information that validates the correct I don't know communication that the person that you're talking to is trying to get from you or from the person you're talking to because a lot of people will ask me, like, do you want to see a picture of my grandpa? Do you want to see a picture of, like, my dog, my cat, like, people? And for me, I don't necessarily need that. It's not, because I don't see them exactly like that. They'll show me things like noses or specific aspects about themselves to convey who they are to validate that you're talking to them. But I won't see them like I see a picture. So that's usually how I perceive souls. And then when it comes to spirit guides, spirit guides are different, but... 
they usually convey themselves to mediums in ways that like depict who they are characteristically, not necessarily what they look like. So it's their personality, how they help you, and who they are. But again, unlike souls that have a physical body, spirit guides don't in the same way that we understand it. So when I see things, it's mostly in my mind's eye with clairvoyance because physical things freak me out. Okay, well, let's do clairaudience. So I'm very clear audience. I have synesthesia, so sounds usually turn into colors. Um, and that happens most of the time. I did not know I had synesthesia until we did our aura video where you were like, did you know that some people could like hear sounds? And then I was like, oh no. Hear colors. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Hear colors. And I was like, no. And then I can see auras. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that goes into signs and symbols, but a lot of times with a clear audience, I will hear people's voices in my head and that indicates who's talking because I'll recognize people by their voices. So something that's very like clear audience based is if you're watching a movie and you can't pinpoint this one person and then they open their mouth and talk and you know exactly who they are because you recognize their voice over what they look like, you're probably clear audience. So a lot of times I will hear people's voices and I will recognize who they are based upon their voice. So like Zaroth has a very prominent voice. So when he talks, I know it's a different like tone of voice. He says it's kind of like it goes into the energy signature of a person. So because sometimes I don't see anything. I won't see what a person looks like. I won't see anything about them, I just can feel someone standing in the room. So when I can hear their voice, sometimes it helps me remember who they are. So like if you had another reading with me, like if I told you, there's this dude here, he's doing these things, and then you book another reading, I may say the same thing and not have any idea that I'm talking to the same person because I'm not seeing him. <laughs> so a lot of times, people, souls will use their voice to indicate who I'm talking to. So a lot of times a change in voice will help me understand that there's someone new talking. Also with Claire, Claire audience, I'll get sounds. So it doesn't need to be talking necessarily. It can be sounds. So someone asked me about their tarot cards once and the tarot cards sounded like a storm because they were like unbalanced. They needed to be cleansed. So certain sounds will give or trigger information based upon the way in which it sounds. I used to use it like as a yes and no. So if I had like a low pitch noise, that would be a no. Or if I had a high pitch noise, it was a yes. So it was those types of things that gave specific information that didn't need to be voices. But what's also really weird is because I have... Um, I have auditory processing disorders, which means when people speak, I have a hard time processing what they say, so I don't know what they say until like a few seconds later. What happens in my head glare, with my glares and my psychic abilities is that I will get the first part of what they say and then clear cognizance will fill in the blank. So I'll hear, ah, and then the rest of the word will just be in my head cognizantly. So that's why also names are kind of hard because it's a very specific thing and I'll only get the first like sound of it and not the rest. I had that happen yeah. like last week. Someone had an R name and I just heard their R and then nothing else. And I was like, yeah, is well, it an R name? <laughs> my spirit guys have been trying to help me with it um, by giving nicknames to people because it's easier to get a nickname because it's like based upon like a physical object. So they give me like feelings of that. So like if someone were to call you like cupcake or princess mm -hmm. or blondie, mm -hmm. like we did in the conjuring house, it's easier for me to get those things because souls will point them out because they're trying, they're trying to transition me to getting names. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. huh. Cause I've had, I mean, similarly to bounce off you, I've had souls been tell me that they will talk to the person that I'm talking to. Like my client, they'll be like, I call them a nickname, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> they just make me feel like they used to call them like a, a, a term of endearment, but I never know 
are it's hard for me to know what it is i think i've gotten it like once or twice but yeah names are hard yeah so spirit my spirit guides specifically are using nicknames for people because it's easier to get a nickname so for my clear audience it works a lot with my clairvoyance and clairsentience. Again, I don't ever get information just singularly through one clair. It's a whole bunch of clairs at the same time. It's just whether or not one is taking more precedence over another. So if I'm, for example, last week I was talking to a lovely human being who their father came through and was talking. So to sort of validate who they are and certain things that are going through, they'll give me clairvoyant things, which is what we already talked about. Some of those clairvoyant things will be like memories. So how this deals with clairaudience is, I heard my client's father in my head say, I was proud of her because, and then he showed me in my mind a memory of his that he had from spirit of watching her walk across graduation stage for like high school or college. And then he gave me the emotions clairsentiently of her being scared to do it. So he was like, I'm proud of her for doing this. So he gave me clairaudient sentence of I'm proud of her clairvoyant, uh, like memory of him from spirit watching her walk across the graduation of why he was proud of her. And then the reason was the emotions that she felt or the trepidation of walking across the graduation stage because she has anxiety about doing things like that. So you can get the clairaudient like sentences. And it was weird because in my mind, the sentence of I'm proud of her because was in my own voice. But when it comes to clairaudient things that I hear, sometimes I'll also hear them or feel perceive them with clairsentience of feeling that his voice was deeper than mine. Like, you know, when you have bass playing in your car and you can feel it in your chest, mm -hmm. when I'm talking to somebody that has a deep voice, I'll get that rumbly sensation in my chest to know that they're masculine or feminine. So that's how I know that the voice in my head of I'm proud of her because was not my own inner monologue because I had the clairsentient valid, like verification of that it's a male's voice and then the other associated information of the memory and her the feelings that she had associated with it so you don't hear people's voices not usually you only hear your own voice in your head mm -hmm. they'll use but they'll use other clairs to tell me like how their voice sounded if they had an accent if it was more feminine or high-pitched things yeah, like that can you hear my voice can you imagine my voice in your head yeah i can Interesting, right? Um, just in, it's just confusing that you don't have the you don't have the correlation between souls' voices. What do you mean? Why can't you imagine a soul's voice in your head? Well, I think it's because I've never actually heard it before, so they'll give me things to. Yeah, but it would be like I hear him. It would be like if you were drinking a cup of tea, and if your eyes were closed. So you're drinking the cup of tea, like you smell that it's tea. You know that it's tea, you can envision like what color it might be based on if you taste milk in it or not, but you don't like actually see the tea. <laughs> that's kind I of hear like... people's voices in my head that I've never heard before. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, maybe... Like I can hear Zoroth's voice. I've never heard someone's voice like that before. I can hear my other spirit guide's voice. Okay. I mean, I have that too with spirit guides, but with people, I feel like I, I do can't it do it. Too. You think? Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's how I know the difference between a male voice and a female voice is because I can hear it. Yeah, but and I can't... that's how I know it's not this, like, if I hear a man's voice, I know it's not Zoroth's voice because it sounds different. I don't know. Maybe I haven't thought about it that much. Yeah. I don't know. Because when I hear... It's, I can hear spirit guides' voices if they choose to use a voice with me. Sometimes they don't. You Sometimes they just voices use... Too. That's crazy. I don't know. I feel like I would have to hear the person actually talking from like a video or something to like confirm it. Like if there was a famous person I was talking to, like, I don't know, Einstein. I don't know what Einstein sounds like, but every time I talk to him, he doesn't use clairaudient information though. At least he hasn't. I can hear his voice. That's just weird to me. Do I know how to describe it? No. <laughs> it's German. <laughs> ah, that makes sense. He's got a like a... It, 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 you can like a roughness to his voice i can feel it when they speak like german or russian or like one of those eastern european languages yeah, because it's like, like a, a he has like a raspy mid-tone voice huh 
I can hear his voice. I've never heard Einstein talk before. That's crazy. Just inside my head. Huh. But that's how I... Do you, like, feel the rasp in your voice, or do you only hear it? it? I feel it, though. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. That's how I know that, like, 90% of the time, when I get information, I won't see things. Unless I'm trying to. I'll just hear people talk, and I'll be like, a woman just said something, but it's not a voice I've ever heard before. That's That's how I know it's not someone associated to me. Yeah, I don't know if I hear them the same way like I'm hearing you, or like replaying your voice in my head. Because if I'm talking to somebody, say like, I speak to a lot of people that have like Hispanic or Latin heritage, and I'll like see them in my mind's eye talking and using their hands, and then I can feel what it would feel like to speak the language that they're speaking, but I don't necessarily hear it. Yep. I mean, I accents are hard because I can't tell the difference between any accent, even if someone was speaking to me. Uh, <laughs> no, that's okay. So, but that's yeah. crazy. That's I can cool. hear it. Huh? Do you have anything else for a clear audience? I don't think so. Okay. Clear sentience. So I'm very clear sentient. Um. But the way in which I view my clear sentience is very much like. It's like an observatory feeling of emotions and feelings, sensations, versus a feeling it in my body. I don't know, I do this in a lot of different ways. First off, when I get information from souls, I will get a feeling associated to what they're saying. And it's kind of like when you're watching a scene in a movie, they put music in the background, and the music's supposed to tell you how you're supposed to feel. That's clairsentience for me when people are talking. That's really funny. The music in the background is supposed to tell you how you're supposed to feel. <laughs> yeah, because you can watch a scene and they put scary music and you're like, oh, and then you play the same same thing, but they put sad music and then you're sad. Did you not know that? No, 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 I oh, did. Okay. I've just never heard someone say it, like, like, say what it is that they're doing, and then it just makes me think about, like, punk rock and emo music. There's, like, a Hollywood Undead song that I've always liked, and it's... Yeah, funny because they make it in an upbeat tune. <laughs> Claire sentience. Um, it cut like gives context of what they're telling me about. So I can do that. I can also feel people's personalities. So I always thought I was just judgmental, but I'm one of those people that can literally meet a stranger and know everything about them before they even open up their mouth and. That is something a lot of people can do that goes into clear cognizance, but I can also feel what their personality feels like. So there's that. And then the physical sensation side of things, I can feel people standing in a room um, and I can feel how they feel about me, like their specific emotions, and they can be physical or non-physical. Um, but I can also feel when souls are like, touching me in some way so like if they have their hand on my shoulder I will feel like tingling sensations where their hand is or if they have like some sort of physical ailment or if they show me how they die I can feel it within my own body and I can do that with souls and with living people so like the other day I had a reading with someone that had like problems with their back so I was like I feel pressure in my back is this specifically happening that sort of thing but I can also do like past life stuff and be like did you die in this specific way because I can feel it within my body of how you died and a lot of times when that happens I won't see anything I just feel it so clairsentience your turn um for me clairsentiently I do the psychic proprioception of like where souls are in space related to me which you do too which is fun makes me happy (laughs) it's something um and then claire for me i don't think i'm an observatory clairsentient i am a visceral clairsentient because if you're gonna have a reading with me you should bring tissues but you should also bring tissues with me and somehow pass them through the computer over zoom to me because a lot of times when i'm talking to souls they will make me feel the emotions they have towards you or towards certain things and I will feel them as if they are my own emotions. So a lot of times I get emotional because souls will show me and make me feel how much love 
they have towards you. And that's a very overwhelming thing. Um, in other instances, how M says that she feels things in her body related to like ailments or how someone died, souls will do the same thing for me. It's not unpleasant. Um, they just have certain ways to express ailments or things that they've gone through uh, in a way that it, like is pressure in your back or um, for me it's weird like if someone died of like an aneurysm that's a very ex like that is just always the same clairsentient feeling every time I've talked to a soul that's died of something like that um, it's very quick it's very fast it's almost like if someone were to turn on the lights and turn off the lights at the same time but in a physical sensation does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah um and then for example if i'm doing like a house reading clairsentience plays a really big role in house readings because if your house is old enough it has a clairsentient feeling about itself so i won't i will both see the house of how it's laid out but i'll also feel the house as if i was the house so for example one time i talked to a house that loved its fireplace and I could feel as if the fireplace was a part of myself and then could describe what the room looked like. Yeah, I've done that before. Someone asked me about their past life and what kind of plane they were in and I could feel how many propellers the plane had as if it was on my face. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So, and then I'll feel the emotions. Like phantom limb syndrome. <laughs> yeah, and I'll feel the emotions that the house has for its fireplace. Like he was like, it's a raised brick fireplace. It sits up off the ground. All of these things. Like he liked that the squirrel would sit on his roof and that the tree overhang, like overhung uh, over the roof. And I was like, I feel all of this. And it's very weird to feel what a house feels like. Um, so yeah, that's how clairsentient works. But I feel things very viscerally. So sometimes it's overwhelming and it, it can be hard but i don't necessarily meet people and know everything about them though that's that's where i like falter i would say because it's not something that i i do i i like to say that i have boundaries because i don't want to know everything about everyone all the time so if you want me to know things great then i'll look into it but if not it's not going to be on my radar it's not something that i will feel Okay, clear cognizance. So, clear cognizance is just knowing. It's psychic knowing. It's kind of like you get a thought out of nowhere. There's no like visual, auditory. There's nothing. It's just you have a thought. Feels like you're assuming information or like an instinct or something. Clear cognizance is what I use most of the time. It's very much I feel like I'm only clear cognizant, and then I just filter all of the clear cognizant information through the rest of my clairs, but that like blows people's minds. There's a lot of people that can't visualize things or have an inner monologue. They just have thoughts. I'm surprised I'm not one of those people because I'll have dreams where it is entirely claircognizant. Interesting. So, no visual, no auditory information, just claircognizant thoughts. Um, and I will like astral project and hit claircognizant thoughts. It's interesting. But with claircognizance, the way I like to explain it is it's like you have big overreaching thoughts so it is overtly hard to a know what's happening and know what piece of information is important with the thought so if a soul is telling you about a park you have the entire idea of what the park is what it's called why it's there what it looks like how many benches are there where the paths are all of that and that just goes under the label park so for me, with claircognizance, it's very much a, uh, I'm getting it all the time, and I will get it in the background of me speaking about things, so it's hard to know when it's happening, so I will get signs and symbols that will indicate that this is a piece of information that I need to pay attention to. So again, it's like taking a folder with a label on top of it, and the label indicates, okay, this is what we're going to be talking about. And then I can go into the knowing information about stuff. Um, but it's very, very passive and it's very hard to uh, know when it's happening. And it's something you need to learn when it's happening. Because claircognizance is kind of like a math problem. It's like 
you just magically get the answer versus trying to do your work. That's what claircognizance is. And a lot of times for me, claircognizance is it's like one idea goes into another idea, goes into another idea, and all of the ideas get connected, and that's the information that I will give you. That's your turn. <laughs> okay. Claircognizance is hard for me. When we first started trying to figure out how to convey claircognizance in words, which is hard because it doesn't have words, how do you convey something that doesn't have something? I thought that claircognizance was the lack of all other psychic abilities. But it's the opposite. It is the opposite. We figured that out. So when when we live in the physical world, we use all of our five physical senses, see, touch, taste, hear, smell, to understand, convey, and receive information. However, in the spirit realm, they don't need those because they're not in a physical existence where you need that information or stimuli to explain your surroundings or thought processes. So what it is is that it's just a blink of all of those things to create an understanding or knowing. And well, it's just thoughts. Yeah. So but everyone is claircognizant, but a lot of times because we're physical beings, it's hard for us to understand or know what's happening, which is why it gets like filtered down through your physical senses. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. So when it's given to you claircognizantly, it can be hard to discern your thought or that claircognizant thought from anything else. And one of the ways that it helped, my spirit guides helped explain it to me, and it might help explain it to you, M uses the folder analogy, which makes sense to you, but it's hard for me to understand. So I was like, can you guys please help me get a better sense of what M's trying to explain to me? And the way they used uh, something relatable to me was, you know, when you're a little kid and there's a certain smell or a certain taste that when you grow up, if you smell or taste that, you immediately are brought back to a time and place of what you were doing and things like that. And you just all encompassly know and understand that memory that that smell or taste triggers. That's what clairsentience is like. You just are Clair brought... cognizance. Sorry. Yeah. Clair cognizance. <laughs> Clear cognizance brings you back to that and you're like, oh crap, you don't have to think about it, you just know it. So that's how my spirit guides helped explain clear cognizance to me and I was like, sick, makes sense. And I just wanted to share that because I was like, now I understand what you talk about with the folders. Because it's the same thing with the folders, just a different yeah. experience. So clear cognizance is fun. Um, it's been happening more often for me lately and I'm feel like I'm slowly getting better at it, but it really is hard because it's hard to validate those things and understand if it's you or someone else. So yeah, claircognizance is fun. Okay, last two clairs are the taste and smell one. So claircognizance is taste and clairalience is smell. Um, I hate both of them. <laughs> Uh, I get more smells than I get taste, and it's just, I am sensory avoidant. I hate the fact that I have the ability to taste, so that would be, <laughs> it would be cool if I didn't need to do that. Um, so I will normally get taste and smell in a sign or symbol sort of way, so they will use taste and smell to convey certain ideas. I don't know, I really hate getting taste, so I don't normally get them. I usually will get the sensation of taste and then they'll just clear cognizantly give me information about it so I don't have to go through the experience because I hate it. But where it's smell, they'll give me smells that I associate with certain things in order to give me information. So if I'm reading you and I smell like turkey or warm smell, it's usually... Did you say warm or worm? Warm. <laughs> it's usually associated to like get-togethers or like people coming over or like family because I always associate the smell of like turkey to like Thanksgiving because hate turkey would never eat it but the only time I smell it is when people are coming over to eat turkey because other people eat turkey <laughs> um but yeah that's the only way I really do smell and taste is that's like when it's actually happening versus the clairsentient feeling of it happening and then it just being filled in with claircognizance because I don't enjoy it happening. It's overwhelming. 
but um, usually people that are very clairsentient have these two abilities that are very developed, like Liv. Yeah, twin flames, sensory avoidant, sensory seeking. I love taste and smell, uh, so souls will use it a lot for me, especially when it comes to like family things, but they use it in the same way that they use it for you, of, like family gatherings. Um, when I'm doing pet psychic readings, animals love to use taste and smell because they use taste and smell to experience their world a lot, uh, whether they want to or not. Um, so if you're giving your pet like a certain medication, they will tell me like, this one tastes bitter, this one I don't like the smell of it, and they'll give me the taste and smell to help figure out what medication it is that they're giving you or that you're giving them. Um, or certain treats like you know how some people really like to eat potato chips or crunchy things not necessarily because it tastes good but because of like the sensation of eating crunchy things animals are the same way they like to eat things that are crunchy or they like to eat things that are not crunchy um, those little like pate like I don't know squeezy sticks that cats you can give as treats you know what I'm talking about they're like these little tiny like squeezy tubes, like That's a gogurt pout, but of like absolutely disgusting. Of like really stinky uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah really, <laughs> really stinky wet gravy that you can give to a cat, and cats love it. Uh, but yeah, it's really funny. They like certain textures, and when I'm talking to animals, they'll give me the certain textures and smells that they like or don't like. So people, it comes through too. But mostly animals like to give me textures. Oh, one time I was doing a house reading though, and the house told me through smell, mm -hmm. through Claire aliens, mm -hmm. that one of the people that lived there was like the sister of my client burned incense, and the house was like, "You are going to burn me down, and I don't like the way that smells." <laughs> Houses can't smell. Right. Exactly. <laughs> They can't smell, so how are you telling me that? And when I told my client, we were both flabbergasted. It was hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, clairaliance and clairgustance are fun. And yeah. it's cool, too, when I'm talking to animals, because the food tastes like what it tastes like to them, so it doesn't gross me out. So, did any of these things relate to you guys? Do you understand your gifts a little bit better? If so, comment them down below. But if you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you guys in the next one. If you guys want more content like this and you can't wait until next Wednesday, go listen to our podcast, which comes out every Sunday at 11, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And you can listen to it on our Meta Psychics Extra YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever you like, my dude. But yeah, until next time, we are your Meta Psychics. Now I want turkey. Gross. <laughs>